Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. So, uh, okay. <laughs> I actually just finished filming this video. This video took me about two and a half hours to film. And then I went to go and import the footage to iMovie, which is what I used to edit. And all of the footage, like the audio was completely off. Like this little bitch here was making like these noises like every two seconds. I'm that much of a perfectionist that I'd rather refilm the whole video even though it is now 11 p.m. So I thought that I would just kind of come here, refilm this video. As you can see, I've got my cup of tea here. So let's just have a really kind of chilled out conversation about some makeup. I'm gonna be talking to you guys today about strobing and baking as well. So a couple of things before we move on. My tea today, I usually have it like an NC35, but today it's like an NC37. Like she's like a little darker today. Like she got a tan. And on another note, I was just cleaning my beauty blenders to refilm this video. And I kind of gave up halfway. Like I was like, oh fuck it. Like I'll be bothered cleaning this last one. Now I've had this beauty blender for about almost a year, which is fucked up. But I will say that I take very, 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 very good care of my beauty blenders. I store them in an open area where it's cool, there's no humidity. I've never had a problem with mold growing on my makeup sponges. I know that sounds really disgusting, but I keep them in fucking pristine condition, Henny. Kind of gave up halfway and cut my beauty blender in half. The inside isn't even that bad. Like I've seen a lot of people do this and there's like mold and fungus. I mean, this is black, so you're probably not gonna see it. But like how much does a beauty blender soak up your product? I don't know, I thought it was pretty cool, but anyway. And on another note, I never realized how happy and how much joy a pair of sunglasses can like bring me. <laughs> so I finally got my hands on the Key and Desi Perkins collab. I have been wanting these bad bitches for ages and I finally got my hands on them. These are the on the lows. Now I wish that I could go for the high keys and I honestly don't know what it is about aviators. They just do not suit me at all. But what I love about these is that they are really big, oversized and they're really boxy. So when I put them on and I love this gold like rose gold detailing here. It's just like how fucking badass are they? Like I love them. So, okay, just lost my face, cute. So I wear them a little further down that we can like see the brow even though my brows aren't done. But on days where I don't want to draw attention to my brows, I just, and you can't see shit. I seriously feel like I look like one of those guys that are like in the matrix, if you know what I mean? Like those, oh my God, these lights are bright. You know those guys from the matrix, the detective guys, the evil ones? I feel like I look like one of those guys with these on. <laughs> anyway, let's get onto these fucking tutorials. So I'm gonna go and do my foundation and concealer off camera and then I will come back and we will continue this bitch. Alrighty, so by this point, I hope that you guys have gone and grabbed a snack, some kind of refreshment, a cup of tea, a coffee, a glass of wine, like just, just do it. Okay, so let's start off with baking. So the whole point of baking is to basically highlight underneath your eyes or wherever you put your powder, which is what we use to bake. So basically it highlights and it also makes that area bulletproof, like bulletproof. Proof. Like that shit ain't going nowhere today, honey. So I'm gonna start off just by kind of getting rid of any under eye creases because this is where everyone bakes. And then what you wanna do is you wanna make sure that you take a translucent loose powder. Now when you're picking your translucent powder, you wanna make sure that it doesn't flash back. Now the best way to test for this is to just go on Google images and look up, uh, for example, Kryolan translucent loose powder flashback test. And then people who have done tests will show you with and without flash. Now the reason why is because Translucent powders are white powders. So if it has any kind of flashback, it's gonna kind of show like wherever you put that product, it's gonna show up white. Now the reason why you don't wanna use a pressed powder is because you're gonna be putting a fuck ton of this underneath your eyes and wherever else you wanna bake. And pressed powders are usually meant for like a light to medium coverage, whereas you can get full coverage with loose powders. So now they look like a coke whore, just hear me out. So you're probably thinking, Jacob, like how is this gonna highlight underneath my eyes? Just give me a sec. Basically by putting an absolute crap ton of powder on top of your skin, it basically stops your skin from being able to breathe. So what that means is, is that because our body naturally kind of radiates heat, the heat is getting trapped in between our face and the powder. So the body heat is right in the middle here, right? So what that means is, is that is literally 
cooking our concealer and this powder onto our faces. Like turn your grill on, turn your oven on. We're baking at 35 degrees, sweetheart. Now, however long you want to keep this on for is really up to you. If you have a drier skin, I would definitely recommend leaving it on for about 20 seconds and or 30 seconds max, maybe a minute max. And then just kind of dusting it off because it is going to dry out the skin because it's a powder. It's, it's going to set it. It's going to go matte completely. So I like to keep mine on for about 20 seconds, especially underneath the eye because I don't like my under eyes to look crepey or anything like that. So this trick actually came from the drag world. That's just like cream contouring and highlighting. That all came from the drag world. And drag queens bake for about 20 minutes, half an hour, 45 minutes sometimes because they put a lot of product on their faces. However, just for me and you, I mean, I don't know if you're a drag queen, like if you are, do half an hour, 40 minutes, boo. But for people who are kind of going to do this just for like every day, I keep it on for about, I don't know, like a minute, two minutes, and then that should be plenty, honey. So I don't know if you can see, but it's just mattified my face really, really nicely. And it's also just highlighted. It's just brought a little bit more light to the center of my face, which is what I want. Now, as you can see, I baked my jaw. That's because when you apply your contour, that is actually going to stand out a lot more. Now, a lot of people would contour, bronze, highlight, whatever the fuck, and then bake that area. You definitely, definitely can do that. It's like sometimes I even just grab my press powder and then with that, I'll just use like this kind of powder, something a bit more flat, and then I'll just kind of go underneath with my press powder and then it will just sharpen it up on its own. So you don't really need to do that. Now, a brush set that I did want to shout out is the Sigma Baking and Strobing brush set. Now, if you really wanna get into baking and strobing, this is the one brush set that you will need. Obviously, as you can see, these are dirty because I did just use them. And I just wanted to say, this is not sponsored. Sigma ain't paying me. Yes, I am affiliated with Sigma, but I just wanted to shout them out. I'm not being paid to make this video. I'm not being paid to talk about these products. I just wanted to. So the Bake Kabuki brush, as you can see, it's an angled brush. The reason why this is so great is because it has a really kind of fine edge so you can get right underneath the eye and not have to worry about moving your concealer or poking yourself in the eye. As you can see, it's like skin tone because I even love using this as a foundation brush. I know it sounds real weird, but it is synthetic. So like it's, it's actually really fucking bomb. And then these last two brushes. Okay, so this is the powder sweep brush. So obviously you can use this just to kind of sweep away your bakage. I actually like using this for contouring. The Nikki Tutorials was using this as well for quite some time to contour and whatever Nikki uses, I need to use, so yep. And this bad bitch, okay. So let me just explain the difference between the Morphe M510 and the Sigma Fan Brush. Fan brushes are naturally gonna give you a very blended out, seamless, light application of your highlighter, especially this one here because it is synthetic. This Morphe one, this is made from goat hair. So what this means is, is that it's gonna pick up a lot more product and deposit a lot more product onto your skin a lot quicker. I'll use a Morphe M510 just to kind of go all over my cheek. And then I'll use the strobing fan brush to kind of highlight precisely just on top of like my cheekbone, for example, if that makes any sense. But it is seriously worth it because you get, what, five brushes and you can use them for so many different things. Like they are such versatile brushes, especially because they're all synthetic. So yes. Okay, so now onto strobing. So strobing is a trend that came upon us about, I don't know, was it like 2015? Like mid 2015, everyone's like, oh my God, strobing, 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 blah, blah, blah. Mm. You know when like you get to the bottom of a good cup of coffee or a cup of tea and that's where like all the sugar is and then it just like Ugh. So in a nutshell strobing is basically just highlighting the face and highlighting it to the fucking extreme without contouring So I'm gonna show you how I like to strobe my face So first you want to start off with a blush today I'm gonna be using Milani Luminoso blush if you guys have seen literally any video on the internet <laughs> You've probably seen someone use this because <laughs> it is such a beautiful beautiful peachy apricot shade It has a bit of a shimmer through it, but it's not too crazy pigmented it is just such an amazing, amazing blush, you guys. Because I want a really like nice light dusting of this, I am gonna take it on a duo fiber brush. This is a Zoeva 125 stippling brush. So I'm just going to kind of swirl my brush around and then you just basically wanna apply it anywhere that you would apply your blush like normally. And I am building it up quite a bit because I want it to stand out for the video, obviously. And if you guys haven't seen like my contouring and highlighting and my blush videos and stuff like that, I'll leave those beginner series videos linked down below so that you guys can check them out. Okay, cool. So now that we have our blush on, now it's time to pick a highlighter. I'm just going to show you guys a few of my favorites. So obviously this is Jeffree Star's 
you can tell it's late at night, yeah? So obviously this is Becca Champagne Pop. I'll do like a little swatch. This is by far my most favorite and most used highlighter of all time. I have never gone one makeup application on myself or on a client without putting this somewhere on my face. I'm not even joking. And like, I never want it to run out. Like I'm going to cry when it runs out. And then I'll just go and buy another one. Now, if you don't want to spend that much money on a highlighter, I completely understand because that one is quite expensive. So you could go for Mac Soft and Gentle, which is an oldie but a goodie. This one here is a bit more of like a, more of like a pearl, I would say. So that's Soft and Gentle right there. Or you could even go for Mary Luminizer, which is drugstore. Like it's from Target. You can buy it. You can buy it literally anywhere. Hi. Are you feeling me? Yeah. I'm fucking breaking out again. This is shit. What can we recommend for him? <laughs> Fuck, that light is so bright though. Yeah. You know what? Clean shave. Trust me. Nah. If you, Christian, fucking trust me. Nah. Well, no, you need a bit of scruff though. I don't know, but just clean shave once. No. Just to exfoliate your face. No. It's not manly enough. <laughs> okay, see you back. Bang. <laughs> or another one of my favorites is the Jeffree Star Ice Cold. I always layer this on top of Champagne Pop because this is pure stark white, sweetie. So Ice Cold, Champagne Pop, Soft and Gentle, and the Merry Luminizer. And you know what? I'll mix Champagne Pop and Ice Cold together. That way you guys can get an idea. Like, hello, hi. So for today, I'm actually gonna take Becca Moonstone. I haven't used this one in like at least six months. I'm, I'm not even joking. And then you basically just wanna run it over your cheek area. Now, if you have like really like plump cheeks like that, then you can put it all over your whole cheek area. But I... I don't. You know what? That's actually not showing up as much as I wanted it to. I'm just gonna use Champagne Pop. So I'm just gonna run that straight over the top. Now what I always do is I always grab just like a powder brush and I'll always just kind of buff away the, the top and bottom line of where my highlight starts and stops. Just because you don't want it to look like, oh, I'm wearing highlighter. Like you want it to look really natural and really glowy. And one thing that I love doing with highlighter as well is not only layering it, but also using it to highlight different parts of the face. So I'll grab that same highlighter and I'll highlight just like above my brow. Now, if you have textured skin, you may just want to stick to the high points of the face, like the top of the cheekbone, the bridge of the nose, unless you're oily, then don't do it, but you know what I mean. And I'm also going to do the cupid's bow. And if you're like me and you like a really strong highlight and that's just not enough for you, Grab some ice cold with your fan brush. So this is why you need the fan brush. And you just want to kind of run it along the top of your cheekbone. Like how fucking sick does that look? Ugh. And then what I'll do is I'll grab my pinky and I'll just hit the tip of my nose. And I'll kind of just run it up a little bit if I want to. And today I want to. So as you can see, my nose kind of dips down a little bit. So when I'm looking at you like this, it's basically just going to kind of lift it forward and make it look as if it's been pushed up. And I just kind of blend it out using my finger. You can even use like a beauty blender if you want it to look super, super natural, but your finger works just as well. So yeah, I'm just going to finish off with some mascara and a gloss or something on my lips just to finish up this look. And then I'll be right back. I look fucking disgusting. Now, let me just point out what I've got on my lips. Um, so I've got MAC World Liner mixed with the Viva Glam Ariana Gloss. And that's it. Alrighty guys, so that concludes today's video. So I hope you all enjoyed this video. If you guys have any questions, as always, please leave them down below and then I'll make sure to respond to you guys. You guys can follow me on Twitter, Instagram, and Snapchat. That is all down below at the end of this video. For a full list of products, check down below in the description. Everything will be there, including the brush sets and the brushes used. I wanna thank you guys for watching once again and I will see you all in my next video. See you guys. Hey guys, so as Halloween is rapidly approaching because today is Halloween, I thought that I would do my last tutorial because I'm having a lot of people ask me, Jacob, what are you going as for Halloween? And I just said I'm going as myself, a disappointment. So today I'm gonna do 